Hello viewers, a very warm welcome to all of you today. Today we'll discuss a very beautiful poem titled The World is Too Much With Us by none other than William Wordsworth, a wonderful romantic poet. This is a beautiful sonnet with a theme that is relevant in today's time. A theme about being away from materialism and enjoying the beauty and glory of nature. Wordsworth has been a person who has really worshipped nature. William Wordsworth is considered as one of the giants of English poetry, whose greatness as a poet has almost been universally recognized. He was born on April 4th, 1770, and lived most of his life in the rural west of England, known as the Lake District. Now he defined poetry as a spontaneous overflow of feelings, emotions that are recollected in tranquility. William Wordsworth is believed to have composed the poem The World is Too Much With Us in the year 1802 when the Industrial Revolution was in full flower. The materialism that the revolution engendered was one of the reasons Wordsworth has written this poem. He published it in 1807 as a part of collection poems in two volumes. In this poem, the poet contrasts nature with the world of materialism. William Wordsworth shows how people are destroying themselves with consumerism and criticizes the world of first industrial revolution for being absorbed in materialism and distancing themselves from nature. Today we find how society is so bent on making and spending money in smoky factories and fast-paced business enterprises that it ignores the pristine glory of nature, which is a reflection of the divine. This is a universal theme that remains relevant in today's world. The poem reflects Wordsworth's philosophy that humanity must get in touch with nature in order to progress spiritually. Before we take up detailed analysis of this poem, it is important to know the significance of romantic movement. The romantic era includes the time period from the late 18th century to the mid 19th century which emphasized the self-propelled creativity, imagination, and the value of art. Romanticism emerged as a reaction against the age of enlightenment, which emphasized reason and logic, dominated much of European philosophy, politics, and art. Pioneers of the Romantic period wanted to break away from the conventions of the age of enlightenment and make way for individuality and experimentation. Enlightenment thinkers value logic, reason, and rationality. But what about the romantic writers? They valued emotion, passion, and individuality. The Industrial Revolution, which began during the same period, is also said to be responsible for the development of this movement. The Romantic period is the age of poetry with William Blake, William Wordsworth, Keats, Shelley as their major poets. Original, thought-provoking literature and poems were created by some of the most significant poets during this period. England, in particular, produced some of the most artistic and moving poets who penetrated deep emotions and philosophical wonderments in readers around the world. The romantic poets used imagination so that common things could be made to look strange and beautiful through the play of imagination. His poetry is perhaps most original in its vision of relation between man and the natural world. A vision that culminated in the metaphor of nature as emblematic of the mind of God. Another group which was a part of the romantic movement of the late 1700s and early 1800s were the Lake Poets. 
Now you might think, who are these lake poets? They were a group of English poets, such as Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Robert Southey, and William Wordsworth. They all lived in the Lake District in the Northwest England. They believe strongly in the value and importance of nature in poetry and to the soul. They were in rebellion against the strict rules and high formal language of the dominant literary movement of the time, neoclassicism. The connection of the Lake poets to romanticism also encompassed a love of liberty and radical political conventions. The poets had, to varying degrees, sympathized with the French Revolution, believing that France was Europe's champion of liberty. Immersed in their love and worship of nature, the Lake poets also believed in their spirit of the reform through revolution. While maintaining that the union of the soul with nature was of primary importance, the Romantic poets had sincere love for man, or rather the spirit of man. William Wordsworth's poetry exhibits romantic characteristics and for his treatment towards romantic elements. He stands supreme and can be termed as a romantic poet. Before we take up a detailed analysis of this poem, it is important to know the significance of romantic movement. The romantic era includes the time period from the late 18th century to the mid 19th century, which emphasized the self-propelled creativity, imagination and the value of art. Pioneers of the romantic period wanted to break away from the conventions of the age of enlightenment and make way for individuality and experimentation. Enlightenment thinkers value logic, reason and rationality. But what about the romantic writers? They valued emotion, passion and individuality. The Industrial Revolution, which began during the same period, is also said to be responsible for the development of this movement. The Romantic period is the age of poetry with William Blake, William Wordsworth, Keats, Shelley as their major poets. Original, thought-provoking literature and poems were created by some of the most significant poets during this period. England, in particular, produced some of the most artistic and moving poets who penetrated deep emotions and philosophical wonderments in readers around the world. The Romantic poets used imagination so that common things could be made to look strange and beautiful through the play of imagination. His poetry is perhaps most original in its vision of relation between man and the natural world. A vision that culminated in the metaphor of nature as emblematic of the mind of God. Another group which was a part of the Romantic movement of the late 1700s and early 1800s were the Lake Poets. Now you might think, who are these Lake Poets? They were a group of English poets such as Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Robert Southey and William Wordsworth. They all lived in the Lake District in the Northwest England. They believed strongly in the value and importance of nature in poetry and to the soul. They were in rebellion against the strict rules and high formal language of the dominant literary movement of the time, neoclassicism. The connection of the Lake poets to romanticism also encompassed a love of liberty and radical political conventions. The poets had, to varying degrees, sympathized with the French Revolution believing that France was Europe's champion of liberty. Immersed in their love and worship of nature, the Lake poets also believed in their spirit of the reform through revolution. While maintaining that the union of the soul with nature was of primary importance, 
The romantic poets had sincere love for man, or rather the spirit of man. William Wordsworth's poetry exhibits romantic characteristics and for his treatment towards romantic elements. He stands supreme and can be termed as a romantic poet. The world is too much with us. This is one of the many excellent poems of Wordsworth which was written during the early 1800s. The poem's theme revolves directly upon the material inclination of the world and the tragic result of humankind losing sight of all these true things which are truly meaningful. The main idea of Wordsworth was he was trying to present to his readers that materialism and its vices coupled with God's apparent fall from favor. With the socio-economic movement called the Industrial Revolution, came a psychological one to accompany it, and that was materialism. As a slightly indirect consequence, people slowly turned away from God and spirituality in general. The materialistic mindset threw society out of harmony with nature or the universe. It wasn't really right or rather normal. It is a poem which is expressed with a tone of remorse and anger towards the world's state of material inclination. In this poem, Wordsworth condemns the excessive interest of people in money. Today money rules and governs us. Getting and spending have become the chief concern in our lives. We feel too preoccupied in worldly activities. The poet feels that it is of no use as this will make our sense of beauty to starve and die. The poet feels that the sense of beauty is a part of our higher nature and it should be fully developed. Thus, definitely this poem has a valuable lesson for all of us today. Wordsworth suggests that we should spend more time respecting nature because nature is no longer important to any one of us. This poem is rather a very simple poem, but this does not mean that it has no deeper meaning. There is definitely a deeper meaning which can be found by having a deeper reading and understanding of the poem. Wordsworth is very upset with the contemporary society and how the materialistic the world and the nature has become. This can be seen in the lines, getting and spending, we lay waste to our powers. We have given our hearts away, a sordid boon. Here Wordsworth is speaking of how people want more and more and thus give away their hearts to not the one he thinks they should but to the gods and the goddesses of consumerism. He says, for this, for everything, we are out of tune. He means that materialism takes away from achieving the sense of harmony with nature before we take time away from appreciating it by shopping or only being concerned with getting things. Wordsworth is very upset. He says that he wishes he were raised as a pagan so all he could see all he could know was the wonder and majesty of nature. This, he says, would make him happier to see Proteus rising from the sea and to hear old Triton blow his wreathed horn. In the beginning of the poem, he illustrates the human nature. The world, late and soon, in this line, he explained how the past and the present contributed to the evolution of humans. The phrase late and soon could mean sooner or later or it could mean we have done this recently or in the past and will be doing this in future. The poet says our fixation on materialism has been a problem in the past and will continue to be so in future. He says we lay waste our powers, powers meaning our ability to see, to feel, to sense to be 
and imagine and even appreciate. Instead of partaking what Wordsworth believes to be the right thing, we waste our time on possessions that will not be with us in people's memories or in our pockets books when we have passed on. It moves us not, he also says, that little we see in nature that is ours. He says, we have become so absorbed in consumerism in another world that we no longer seem a part of nature. The idea that nature is not a commodity but an equal to man is demonstrated in this line. Unlike society, Wordsworth does not see nature as a commodity. The speaker says that nature cannot be got or spent because it is not a commodity that is manufactured. This implies that Wordsworth envisions an equal relationship between man and nature. The reason people have left nature at the wayside is that we cannot possess nature. It belongs to no one, to everyone. This age of materialism and industrialism is what puts for this, for everything, we are out of tune. People no longer see nature for what they should see it. The environment suffered because of the industrial revolution, because no one really stopped it. The reason being that the ends justified the means. In his anger, Wordsworth makes a slightly defamatory exclamation, Great God, I'd rather be a pagan. In this line, Wordsworth declares he would rather have been raised as a pagan because we are insensitive to the richness of nature. We may be forfeiting our souls. To us, there is nothing wonderful or mysterious about the natural world. But ancients who were pagans created a colourful mythology out of their awe of nature. He says that being a pagan is better than knowing a life where God or spirituality has been eradicated, discounted, disrespected or even laughed at. This statement is very emphatic, especially for his time. Further, he explains in the poem how nature has become helpless in front of our ignorance. This sea, out of tune, in these lines, Wordsworth portrays the greatness as well as the helplessness of nature in front of human greed for a materialistic life. We do not care about nature's gifts like the sea, the wild winds, as our eyes are blinded by the glitter of materialism and we keep ignoring and damaging the nature. To the last six lines of this poem, we find how Wordsworth demonstrates his anger for ignoring the pristine glory of nature. He exclaims that if beauty and kindness of nature cannot turn our minds from materialism or spirituality, then he would become a pagan. He complains to God that in such a heartless world, he would be happier to become a person who does not believe in God, but believes in nature like the old Greek world. In ancient times, Greeks believed in the power of nature and they worshipped only the sea and other natural objects as the god and goddesses. In these lines, he illustrated the frustration from the ignorance of nature. We should understand the importance and usefulness of nature. Wordsworth showed his anger through his poem that we are neglecting the beauty of Mother Nature and running behind the materialistic things. He tried to convey this message to the world that one should not forget its importance, otherwise one day we will face its dire consequences. Wordsworth's poem is a Petrarchan sonnet which consists of an eight-line stanza called the octave and a six-line stanza called the sestet. 
The first stanza presents a theme or a problem and the second stanza develops the theme or suggests a solution to the problem. This Italian sonnet uses the last six lines to answer the first eight lines. The first eight lines, that is the octave, are the problem and the next six lines is the solution. Wordsworth wrote most of the lines of this poem in the iambic pentameter in which a line has five pair of syllables. Each pair consists of an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable. The rhyme scheme of this poem is A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D and C, D. This repetitive rhyming scheme of A, B, B, A, again A, B, B, A, getting and spending, late and soon, emphasizes the monotonous nature of modern life and materialism. The poem's tone is one of complaint as the speaker describes a rift between nature and man. The poet laments that we have lost the ability to feel as we have given our hearts away. The tone is angry, modulated with sarcasm and seeming vengefulness. First, the poet scolds the society for devoting all its energies to material enterprises and pleasures. While pampering their bodies, he says, people are starving their souls. He next announces sarcastically that he would rather be a pagan, at least then he could appreciate nature through different eyes and even see Proteus rising from the sea, perhaps to wreak a vengeance on the complacent humankind. He believes that if people go out and reconnect with nature, they will find spirituality again. To bring about the beauty and significance of nature in this poem, this poem has some marvelous pictures of nature. In this sonnet, Wordsworth reminds us that nature has its own beauty and significance. The poem contains two very beautiful pictures of nature. One is the picture of the sea bathed in the moonlight, moonlight falling freely on the surface of the sea. The other is the picture of the winds that sleep like flowers at night, winds which are mostly blowing with force but which are sometimes calm and peaceful like sleeping flowers. Wordsworth uses the powerful simile that the sea and the wind are to be up gathered now like sleeping flowers, demonstrate the lack of respect modern humanity has for nature. The power of elements that had formerly been revered as wondrous natural forces are now to be harvested as blithely as one gathers up the flowers. This sonnet reveals Wordsworth's love for quiet scenes of nature. The people of his age are not at all moved by the beautiful objects of nature. They do not have any love for the sight of moonlight falling on the surface of the sea or the picture of winds which make tumultuous noise throughout the day but sleep like flowers at night. Nor the people have any liking for any other lovely aspects of nature. The poet wants to be nurtured in the extinct creed of paganism. As a pagan, the poet would have the opportunity of witnessing the sights of pagan gods like the Proteus and Triton. The poet elaborates on man's alienation from nature, claiming that humanity is no longer susceptible to the influence of the sea, the winds, and basically everything that is in nature. The speaker describes the winds at rest like sleeping flowers which howl when they wake up. The poet says, we are out of touch with nature but it could also mean that we are not in the right tune for the natural world, in the right frame of mind to get it or to accept it. The poet says man is out of tune with nature. He is unable to live in harmony with nature. This demonstrates Wordsworth's use 
of the sense experience in his poetry. Like the other sonnets, important things happen in the ninth line of the poem. There is a shift or a turn that moves the poem in a complete different direction. The poet wishes things were different for him at least. He appeals to the Christian God and says he'd rather be a pagan who was raised believing in some antiquated primitive religion. The speaker explains that the world would rather be a pagan and get a glimpse of something that would not make him feel lonely and sad. It reveals the poet's perception of himself in society. A visionary romantic more in touch with nature than his contemporaries. Then the speaker elaborates on the potential glimpses and says he might see Proteus coming out of his ocean, Triton blowing his horn. This sonnet shows Wordsworth's concise and dignified style of writing. He has chosen words with unusual care and with an attention to their sound as well as to their meaning. It is thoroughly representative of Wordsworth's poetic genius. To conclude by writing this poem, William Wordsworth sent out a beautiful message to everyone in his world 200 years ago, but it can still be applied in life today. People shouldn't get too caught up in worldly possessions and forget their roots and connection with nature. Hope you enjoyed the session. We'll look forward to meet you in the next class. Thank you. Wordsworth's poem is a Petrarchan sonnet which consists of an eight-line stanza called the octave and a six-line stanza called the sestet. The first stanza presents a theme or a problem and the second stanza develops the theme or suggests a solution to the problem. This Italian sonnet uses the last six lines to answer the first eight lines. The first eight lines, that is the octave, are the problem and the next six lines is the solution. The poem's tone is one of complaint as the speaker describes a rift between nature and man. The poet laments that we have lost the ability to feel as we have given our hearts away. The tone is angry, modulated with sarcasm and seeming vengefulness. First, the poet scolds the society for devoting all its energies to material enterprises and pleasures. While pampering their bodies, he says, people are starving their souls. He next announces sarcastically that he would rather be a pagan, at least then he could appreciate nature through different eyes and even see Proteus rising from the sea, perhaps to wreak a vengeance on the complacent humankind. He believes that if people go out and reconnect with nature, they will find spirituality again. To bring about the beauty and significance of nature in this poem, this poem has some marvelous pictures of nature. In this sonnet, Wordsworth reminds us that nature has its own beauty and significance. The poem contains two very beautiful pictures of nature. One is the picture of the sea bathed in the moonlight, moonlight falling freely on the surface of the sea. The other is the picture of the winds that sleep like flowers at night, winds which are mostly blowing with force, but which are sometimes calm and peaceful like sleeping flowers. Wordsworth uses the powerful simile that the sea and the wind are to be up gathered now like sleeping flowers, demonstrate the lack of respect modern humanity has for nature. The power of elements that had formerly been revered as wondrous natural forces are now to be harvested as blithely as one gathers up the flowers. This sonnet reveals Wordsworth's love for quiet scenes of nature. The people of his age 
are not at all moved by the beautiful objects of nature. They do not have any love for the sight of moonlight falling on the surface of the sea or the picture of winds which make tumultuous noise throughout the day but sleep like flowers at night. Nor the people have any liking for any other lovely aspects of nature. The poet wants to be nurtured in the extinct creed of paganism. As a pagan, the poet would have the opportunity of witnessing the sights of pagan gods like the Proteus and Triton. The poet elaborates on man's alienation from nature, claiming that humanity is no longer susceptible to the influence of the sea, the winds, and basically everything that is in nature. The speaker describes the winds at rest like sleeping flowers, which howl when they wake up. The poet says, we are out of touch with nature, but it could also mean that we are not in the right tune for the natural world, in the right frame of mind to get it or to accept it. The poet says, man is out of tune with nature. He is unable to live in harmony with nature. This demonstrates Wordsworth's use of the sense experience in his poetry. Like the other sonnets, important things happen in the ninth line of the poem. There is a shift or a turn that moves the poem in a complete different direction. The poet wishes things were different for him at least. He appeals and says he'd rather be a pagan who was raised believing in some antiquated primitive religion. The speaker explains that the world would rather be a pagan and get a glimpse of something that would not make him feel lonely and sad. It reveals the poet's perception of himself in society. A visionary romantic more in touch with nature than his contemporaries. Then the speaker elaborates on the potential glimpses and says he might see Proteus coming out of his ocean, Triton blowing his horn. This sonnet shows Wordsworth's concise and dignified style of writing. He has chosen words with unusual care and with an attention to their sound as well as to their meaning. It is thoroughly representative of Wordsworth's poetic genius. To conclude by writing this poem, William Wordsworth sent out a beautiful message to everyone in his world 200 years ago, but it can still be applied in life today. People shouldn't get too caught up in worldly possessions and forget their roots and connection with nature. Hope you enjoyed the session. We'll look forward to meet you in the next class. Thank you.